Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and today let's create some knurling. That's right, knurling of all things. If you're not familiar with knurling, it is this sort of grippy texture that can be created or machined into knobs and handles. It's much smaller than what we're seeing, but we're gonna create a kind of large version um, to be able to see it well. And this is one of those exercises that's not like it's something that you create often in SketchUp, but it's going to introduce a couple things that'll be uh, just good practice. So let's jump in. So again, yeah, knurling is this sort of texture that if you imagine this being very small, uh, it makes it a very grippy surface. One of the things, uh, not only are we going to create this, but if we ideally let's create this where it could be a solid object like this and we could 3D print it. So let's jump in and do that. Now I'm going to start with a circle and I'm going to have 48 sides uh, or I could have more instead of the regular 24. I want a little more detail in it than the, the normal 24 sided circle. And I'm just going to create a cylinder. Like I said, this, we could make this a lot smaller. Um, but let's turn our hidden geometry on. And the first thing I want to do is group this or make it a component. But then I'm going to come in and pick two of our surfaces right on, uh, you know, one of the cardinal directions. I'm going to take that and make a copy of these off to the side. And then I will cut them out, you know, so copy them and delete them. Then I'll close this group and paste in place those same surfaces. Now, depending on your preferences, how uh, tall, um, you want the knurling. You could make this whatever you want. I'm just going to copy those edges up and that will be the size of our basic knurling. Now, from here, what we would typically do is create a diamond. And we could easily do that by simply drawing lines from midpoints out to this point here. Uh, what I want to do instead is to make this a little more detailed, I think we'll have that outer line like that. But I'm going to draw us in just a little bit. So let me hover over this, find the parallel, lock it, and draw that as the point where we want to make. I'm going to reverse this uh, face. And then again, we could continue drawing this, but instead I will simply select these two surfaces and use the flip tool, because I think that'll be a little faster to just flip those over, then select all of these surfaces and flip them again using the blue axis. And that will be the start of our our knurling diamond. So let's make that a component. And move this back. Let me find the uh, that corner there. Move it back in the green direction. And before I array this around, I want to create one more copy of this up to here so that we can grid, create that diagonal grid. And you can see it's a little skewed because it's based on these segments. So I'm going to use the rotate tool, tap the down arrow key or find the blue um, inference and then use one of these corners and line it up so that this one is correctly placed. Now, 
we can go ahead and array these uh, two diamonds around. So I'm going to grab the rotate tool. I can easily find the center of my circle or cylinder. And so I'll rotate by any of these points, make a copy to make an array. And then because this is 48 segments, I know that uh, you know half of that would be 24. And in fact, I should use 23, 23X to get a total of 24, because we're making 23 copies plus the original. So with that said, I have to take these and then copy these up vertically. And I don't know how many I need here. We're just gonna guess five times. Uh, let's say eight times, something like that. Now, without uh, being too precise, I do want to just take this and let's say move it up to the middle here. And same thing here, I'm going to push pull the cylinder to the middle. Now, if you want to make any more changes, if you're happy with the way the knurling looks and we want to merge all of these together, that sounds fine. But if you want to make any other changes, do it now while we're still in, you know, have a component mode. So for example, if I wanted to come in and say, maybe I want to be a little bit, uh, you know, that, that point is too pointy. I could either reduce it down to something like that, obviously to make it more, or maybe I would draw a line in here. Let's just draw a couple lines between midpoints. And then one more line, because that's not gonna be a totally flat surface, it still reflects the two original segments we had. But something like that would be pretty grippy, but comfortable. So let's, let's see if we can do something with that. Now, at this point, we can select everything, our cylinder group, all of our pieces, and explode them. I like, it should merge. This geometry, because it's overlapping, should automatically merge. It is all selected, but I, I like to select it all. Make sure it merges by just saying intersect faces with model. Again, by default, it should do that. I just like to do it as a little bit of safety measure. Make sure it does. Now, you might uh, notice that this is well and good, and it's taking us a few moments because there's a lot of geometry in here. But I now want to cut the top of this off, the top and bottom, so that we, you know, that we can get rid of this sort of points here. But we need to do a little more, and we can start by intersecting this face with model. Right, because that way we're cutting all of these. Now if we, I'm just lining up my view so that I can do a selection like this, delete those, and that should be good. And then we need to do the same thing down here. I'm just gonna draw some arbitrary circle, just larger. Right click, intersect faces with model, and then get my view right and make a selection to delete this. Now, if this is as far as you needed to go, right? Group this um, because, you know, you just need a visual model. That's great. If we wanted to do, um, to print this, um, <laughs> not at this scale, but uh, at a much smaller scale, this is not a solid object. It's got a lot of stuff going on. And we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to fix some of these issues. Let's go in here and start here. We need to be able to make this top surface all one face. And you can see because of these edges, we're having trouble. Well, 
let's see if by creating one of these surfaces, we can then use the rotate tool and rotate that. So I'm going to rotate that 23 times. And that hopefully will give us that top that we need. Um, ideally, we could come through here and erase out some of this extra geometry we don't need. But let's quickly do that here on the bottom as well. And then I think we can use the, the uh, solid inspector to do the rest of the work for us. If we look in here, we still have a lot of other geometry that we would need to clean up for this to be a solid. We'd have to go through and clean up all this stuff. But I think we can uh, we can shortcut our way to it. We just, we're almost there. So similarly, I'm gonna take this one shape, use the rotate tool, find the center and rotate this. three times. That might be all we need. Let's find out. So I'm going to select this group, run the solid inspector extension, and ask it to fix. Now remember, we've got a lot of internal faces in here. Let me turn x-ray mode on. Got all of these, all of these internal faces. So Let's run our extension, solid inspector. <laughs> Everything's in red. Fix it all for us, please. Ah, oh, beautiful. All of that internal faces, all of that stuff is cleaned up. Again, if we wanted to, this um, we do have these edges that are left over. That does not interfere with it being a solid, but if we wanted to clean those up because you just like... Uh, Hiding up all of those loose edges, that's fine. I'm not gonna go through that whole process, but we have a fully solid, pretty interesting knurling example that we can create fairly quickly by just using components and arrays, and then doing a little bit of cleanup and letting the solid inspector help us do the rest. Um, okay. <laughs> That is a random example, but again, sometimes random examples are great practice of just, this is an interesting challenge, how might we do it? I'm sure there's other ways that we could tackle this and other, um, you know, if you play with this method, you could probably get some other interesting results. It's just fun as one example. So let us know what you think. Let us know if you have, would approach this differently or, um, you know, or if you ever do 3D print this and, uh, you know, send, it, send an example our way, a picture our way. Anyway, we'd love to continue the conversation. Give us some uh, ideas on challenges or things to model that you find uh, interesting or challenging. Maybe we'll be able to build those into future videos like this. Otherwise, please do subscribe if you haven't. We release these videos very regularly. So you can look forward to more. See you next time, y'all.